senior team of doctor who suffered a stroke visits Master Jingyan in Guadian. City U.S. headquarters overcomes challenges to host the Buddha Day ceremony. Welcome to Die Headlines. I'm Sivir Su. Thank you for joining us. 75-year-old Tima TCM doctor Wei Shenxiong has volunteered for more than 20 years. After suffering a stroke, he sought medical treatment at Huadian City Hospital. When he sought treatment in February, the hotel he stayed at collapsed during the earthquake. Although he was rescued, he was shocked by the experience. He recently went to Jinsu abode to visit Master Zheng Yan. <laughs> Seventy-five-year-old TCM doctor Wei Shenxiong came to Huadian City Hospital to seek treatment in November of 2017 after suffering a stroke. He was the first patient who underwent autologous fat stem cell transplantation to treat stroke. <laughs> Wei, who could not move his right hand and right foot, has improved his bodily functions. On February 6th, he returned to Huadian for treatment and stayed in Marshall Hotel, which collapsed. Although he was rescued from the building, he was shocked by the experience. The experience affected his mental abilities. We helped improve the circulation of his brain, but he needs to do rehabilitation exercises every day. He is improving very fast. Accompanied by the medical team, Wei has come to the Jingsi abode to have a meeting with Master Zheng Yan. Before Wei had a stroke, he has worked as a team member for more than 20 years. He has a wish. <laughs> I'm very grateful to her. <laughs> he cries as he expresses his gratitude to his wife. Wei, who's making progress as he undergoes rehabilitation, is a step closer to practicing medicine again. Ophthalmologist Alex Sua has served as a team of Philippines doctor for over 20 years. In April of last year, he felt joint pain in his finger, and later he was diagnosed with leukemia. Fortunately, he found a bone marrow donor and underwent the transplant. Once the medical team received these precious lymphocytes from the donor, they must hurry to transplant them because they will die as soon as they return to room temperature. After we went through the bone marrow transplants at the end of January this year, this is Tima Philippines ophthalmologist's second lymphocyte reinfusion. What we did today is to infuse the donor's lymphocytes that were originally frozen. We hope to improve the patient's hematopoietic function and try to make the donor's lymphocytes function stably in the patient's body as soon as possible. Alex Sua has served as a team doctor for 20 years and has participated in many free clinics. However, he feels joint pain in his finger during an operation back in April 2017. He was later diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia. While he was undergoing chemotherapy in the Philippines, he was also looking for a bone marrow match through Tsuji's bone marrow database. To his surprise, he received the life-saving call on Christmas Eve later that year. Merry Christmas, I said Merry Christmas. The volunteer replied, Merry Christmas. I have some good news for you. We have been successfully matched. It was the best Christmas gift ever. He has been hospitalized in the Hualien City Hospital since January of this year. During his four-month recovery process, the thing he looked most forward to was being able to get back on his feet so he can continue to serve others. I feel blessed to be a doctor. It is the best thing to have the opportunity to serve those who are in need. He said he was very fortunate to successfully match with a bone marrow donor because it is such a small probability. He was also thankful to Tsuji for creating the bone marrow database, giving leukemia patients a second chance at life. In Fengyuan, Taichung, there's a family of six who live in an unsanitary environment. The father has mobility issues and his wife and three of their children are mentally challenged. After home visits, the volunteers started to care for them and help them apply for subsidies. 
71-year-old Mr. Lin was injured in a car accident and has been unable to work for many years. However, he had never applied for a disability card. The problem is that all the members in this family don't know they could seek medical help. It's usually the bore head and us who accompany them to and from the hospitals. Only one of the four children in the family is in good health. As far as I know, the mother is mentally challenged. In fact, her three sons and one daughter also inherited this unfortunate condition. Each member in this family of six has different medical issues. After the borough had reported their conditions to Tsiji, the volunteers came to care for them. They discovered that the oldest son's wound was infected in a spike of fever. After a week in the hospital, the medical team came to his home to help him change his dressings. He has cellulitis, but he doesn't take good care of his wounds. His living environment is also not ideal for healing. He has delayed treatment for almost two months after his last treatment. Now the wound hasn't healed yet. It's not an ideal situation. Miss Lin underwent the surgery for her leg, so the volunteers reminds her every day to keep her wounds clean. In addition, the volunteers also help this family apply for many different subsidies. Doctors, nurses, city volunteers and the borough head work together to help them apply for disability allowances. Then they will guide them to improve their environments to ensure they can all be healthy in the long run. In the aftermath of the 2008 Sichuan earthquake, city volunteers carry out disaster relief work, providing hot food and free clinics. Back then, some students couldn't go to school as their school buildings were damaged. Therefore, city volunteers encouraged them to volunteer. By helping other earthquake survivors, they were able to overcome their own fears. Fan Caiyun, who was a young volunteer in the disaster zone 10 years ago, is now a teacher at a vocational school. Recalling the earthquake, she has many fond memories with the city volunteers. Back then, I was 16 and I saw the beauty of human compassion. Therefore, I miss Tsiji uncles and aunties very much. Wearing the volunteer vest, the children could do as much as the adults. They could help the seniors overcome their grief. I was concerned that the grandma would be lonely, therefore I wanted to cheer her up. Grandma, you need to bask in the sunlight every day as the sunlight can help get rid of the bacteria on your body. They are also very considerate. Grandpa, happy day of the elderly. Wish you auspiciousness and longevity. Help me share with you a Jingsa aphorism. More generosity means less worries. I'm very grateful for you. Four female high school students walk for an hour each day just to clean up the restroom. Many people use the restroom. We feel quite honored to clean the restroom and allow people to use a clean facility. We might not be able to do this. She picks up the trash by hand and put them in garbage bags. Sometimes she combines the garbage into one bag if there aren't too much. During the 100 some days that city volunteers were in the disaster zones, the young volunteers helped prepare hot foods, recycled, and participated in free clinics. It made me feel happy and warm all over. It allowed me to forget my inner fears. The joy of helping others has helped them overcome their fears. Tsiji volunteers have taught me to be kind and respectful toward other people. I will always remember that. Tsiji uncles and aunties told me to hand hot food to other people with both hands. While we carry out good deeds, we need to be respectful.
It's very challenging for overseas volunteers to host the Buddha Day ceremony simultaneously with Taiwan. It was raining on the day of the ceremony hosted by Tsuji U.S. headquarters. However, volunteers handled the situation calmly. It's rare for Los Angeles to rain. However, on the day of the Buddha Day ceremony, it was raining unexpectedly. Nonetheless, it has not affected the outdoor ceremony hosted by Tsuji U.S. headquarters. Volunteers and the public follow the lead of Dharma masters to bow to the Buddha and receive blessings in hope for the ritual to cleanse their minds. We are all here to celebrate the Buddha's birthday because the Buddha's teachings can be applied to anyone, regardless of nationality, ethnicity, or social economic status. All mankind can be inspired and learn from it. Many people told me that it's okay because the rain can help us cleanse ourselves. I feel very touched because we still proceed the ceremony with the most solemn and respectful attitudes. Buddha Day ceremony is a Buddhist ritual, however, the participants are from many different religion and ethnicity. Everyone shares the same heart and goal, that is to pray for a world free of disasters. I've never experienced anything like this before, so I, I'm like in my awe. <laughs> I just think these people here are just so loving. I just, um, I'm hoping that uh, I get to see more of the Buddhists and uh, all the cultures that they, that they share with us. Everyone's been so beautiful and so generous. We've never experienced any so, so great generosity in our lives. I mean, everyone is just so beautiful and so wonderful and so kind. And uh, again, you don't see that anymore. And it, it was a very, very unique experience for us to be here. Other than a ceremony, volunteers also set up exhibition stands and design activities for participants to get to know more about the Tsuji culture and ideology, hoping to inspire the filial piety and goodness in people's heart. At the end of last year, Tsuji Orma Grilla village was devastated by Typhoon Kaitek. Tsuji volunteers continue to provide assistance for the villagers. In May of this year, the volunteers held a Buddha Day ceremony in Orma for the second year in Orma Grilla village. It's the second year that Tsuji Philippines chapter held a Buddha Day ceremony in Orma city. This year, they held events in the Tsuji Orma Great Love Village, attended by more than 2,500 villagers and residents in the neighborhood. The children happily entered the venue holding up the banner. The bridge that Tsuji helped build after last year's Typhoon Kaitak has brought great convenience for the children to go to school. Now they want to express their gratitude. Besides saying things in Chinese, which the children had practiced for a long time, this year the Great Love Villagers also compiled a short drama about the talk of war between angels and devils, inspiring everyone to do more good deeds. I can see that the drama they played is to urge people to do good, but not to do something bad. The drama is very helpful to us. We have learned not to drink, not to gamble, and not to smoke. The ceremony began at sunset. The Buddha bathing place form of this year was arranged in a simple manner as the bamboo and coconut shell were used to hold fragrance water and flowers. By honoring the Buddha with everyone, I felt happier and more at ease. I feel very happy. The celebration was great. Bless the Buddha. At night, the ceremony also came to an end. More than 2,000 people lit the candle in their hands and prayed piously, spreading love to every corner of Tsuji Ormo Great Love Village. Jin Si Hall in Taoyuan, Taiwan hosted the Buddha Day ceremony, where about 1,400 people participated. On top of the graceful rituals, volunteers also performed a sutra adaptation. <laughs> On the Buddha Day ceremony in Taoyuan Jing Siho, volunteers are performing the adaptation of the Sutra of Filial Piety. They take time to practice while reflecting on themselves. In the beginning, I was very upset. It makes me think back to the past and wonder how much I've really done for my parents. 
In one of the acts, Guo Xiaomei plays a sad mother, and the story is somehow similar to what her family is going through in reality. The goodness and filial piety in our hearts need to be awakened. My family has just experienced a major transition, so I hope this play can inspire them. This kind of performance should be seen by more people, so it can influence more people. Zhen Shouzhu, who is in charge of directing the play, has a son in the U.S. She sincerely hopes that this play can be a motivation for her son to come home to visit parents more often. Master, I work hard to achieve your goals. My son told the master this when he was very young, saying he will work towards his goals. Therefore, I hope this wish can bring him back to Taiwan and truly be a child of Ciji. The parental love on the stage pulls the heartstring of the audience tightly. On this special day, they not only honor the Buddha but also give thanks to the parents. More than 1,400 community members feel deeply touched and have their mind cleaned. The power of love continues to grow off stage. Also in Taoyuan, city volunteers pay visits to nursing centers and veteran homes in different communities to care for the elderly. City volunteers always bring joy to nursing centers. Since May is a month for people to express gratitude and feel your piety, volunteers decorated the venue with a solemn Buddha bathing platform. This time they also celebrated a centenarian's birthday. The children also had a chance to watch their parents' feet. When we were young, we were brought up by our parents. Now it's our turn to take care of them. This is something that every child should do to their parents. Every time I wash my mom's feet, I feel emotional pain because my mother has gone from being able to walk to being unable to walk. I have a happy heart. City volunteers in Taoyuan went to different communities to visit nursing institutes and veterans' homes where they treated the elderly people like their own parents. In Luzhu, for the elderly people who have long been bedridden, the volunteers gently called them and invited them to bath the Buddha. We gave them a gentle stroke and told them, Grandpa, we came to see you. Or Grandma, we are Ciji volunteers and we came to see you. Are they lonely like us? When they feel lonely, we should seize the moment and return home to accompany our parents. By interacting with the elderly people with gratitude and compassion, one can not only fulfill their filial piety, but also bring blessings to themselves. According to data from animal rights activists, the average lifespan for a stray cat is only three years. This is because their immunity is greatly reduced as they have no fixed food source. While some people feed stray cats, volunteers say many are simply dumped by their owners. The high cost of medical care for cats and dogs may be one of the causes behind the stray animal problem. Before my classmate had a clinic in Jilong and had a big memo he posted of many pet owners who simply disappeared. At this veterinary clinic, there are many caring pet owners who really have no regret looking after their pets. I have a friend whose pet has diabetes. The treatment costs about 10,000 US dollars, and it must really be loved as few people could handle this. Pets are just like family members. If they are sick, they need to see a doctor. However, it is not cheap as seeing a doctor. The current standard costs are set by local veterinary medical associations. In terms of registration fees, Taipei City will charge seven U.S. dollars. New Taipei will charge five to seven. While Kaohsiung will also charge seven, and Mali County between 1.5 to three U.S. dollars. 
Rabies vaccine will cost about $7 for cats and dogs, but a common 5-in-1 vaccine for a dog in Taipei City and Kaohsiung City is $30 U.S. dollars, and the new Taipei 27 to 30, and the Mali County between 20 to 23. A common blood test per test item in Taipei is $8 U.S. dollars, and in new Taipei City 3 to 7, and in Kaohsiung 9, and Mali County 3 to 9 U.S. dollars. With medical bills are getting higher and higher, more animals may become abandoned. How should the charging fees be more reasonable? The director of the Taipei Veterinary Medical Association says Taiwan already had the lowest fees for pet medicine in Asia. However, discussion of this matter led to many controversies. Prior to 2016, Taipei did not have a standard for these fees for 12 years. When we started establishing standard fees, we worked with the Consumers Foundation and the Fair Trade Commission. There was a lot of debate and the FTC hoped that some sort of standard should now arise. But the Consumers Foundation hoped that you could set some guidelines for charging that the public could follow to prevent many vets from getting unreasonable fees. The Taipei Veterinary Medical Association simply established an upper limit for fees, and no lower limit, but authority said that fees should be set. The Fair Trade Commission proposed that it shouldn't be them to set prices, but the relevant agency in charge. They simply wanted to review the recommend fees afterwards, but this amendment to the law led the FCT and Consumers Foundation to say that a fair price should be set with both an upper and lower limit. Our fair trade law clearly stipulates that any business or legally established trade association can use a resolution or supervisory group to set standard prices as this will affect the operation of the market. The competent authority in charge want to return the cost of veterinary treatment back to market mechanisms, but in the meantime, they receive complaints from veterinarians. At the moment, the COA has amended veterinary law in the next session of the legislature. Article 24 of the law says veterinary clinics must not charge fees for medical treatment in violation of reasonable charges and should provide fee schedules and receipts of the request of the owner. The competent authority in the municipality can set standard fees. However, veterinarians are also worried that the medical quality of pets in the future will be greatly affected. For example, if you can only charge 15 US dollars for ultrasound, then how can we afford a machine which costs 150,000 US dollars to provide this service? We can only purchase a cheap machine which will greatly influence on the quality of medical care. We don't really want the government to intervene by setting standard fees. Taiwan is so far unable to promote pet health insurance. The root cause of this problem is that pets' household registration, including implanting IC chips, has lagged behind. At the moment, there is a debate over how to balance the cost burdens for pet owners and the high-quality care that vets want to provide. As the government continues to pursue its policy of zero culling, it's also calling upon the public to stop abandoning pets, as medical treatment for such animals continues to be a difficult problem to overcome. To celebrate Buddha's birthday in Malaysia, 30 volunteers went to a psychiatric center in Selangor to hold mobile Buddha Day ceremony, so the residents could also honor the Buddha. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye.